We've had Franklin and Idalia be two simultaneously active major hurricanes as August is coming to a close. Now they're both weakening tropical cyclones, but it seems as though the party is just getting started as there is a lot more activity on the horizon. And so I will be taking you guys through all that is expected and all the systems marked out there that we should be watching for the next couple of days, as well as the potential of seeing something develop coming from the main development region, potentially to the Caribbean, or it could very well stay out to see so we will be looking at all of that in this update and before i go into details please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important video Alright, so we're starting out taking a look at the Atlantic Basin and we can see that we've got quite a bit going on right now. So looking at the latest map uh, coming from the National Hurricane Center, the Outlook, we've got our systems which are marked. We've got Idalia, which will be exiting the U.S. as we head into tomorrow. We've got Hurricane Franklin. We've got Depression uh, 11 out there as well as two disturbances, one of which is designated as an InBest, InBest 94L. So let us go ahead and briefly look at these systems. So in terms of 94L, it is given a medium 60% chance of development through the next uh, seven days. So it is likely that it might become a tropical depression out there in the Atlantic and another tropical wave will be emerging as we head into the next couple of days. That is the one we want to watch for potential development headed to the Caribbean or as I said, it could miss the region. So there are many possibilities on the table right now, but uh, going to tropical depression 11, it shouldn't last long out there should dissipate soon not a problem for anyone likewise for the remnants of GERD that is one of the disturbances only given a 10% chance to develop because conditions are not going to be conducive to allow for it to become anything and then going on to Franklin now so Franklin is making its way by Bermuda and uh, it is currently a cat 2 hurricane sustaining winds of 105 miles per hour and it is moving to the northeast so while it continues to the northeast it should also gradually weaken as it encounters less conducive conditions as especially with regards to the cooler waters out there. Now, as we head to the U.S., the southeastern U.S., we've got Idalia, and uh, it made landfall earlier today as a significant Cat 3 hurricane, a strong Cat 3, almost Cat 4. It actually had uh, Cat 4 winds at the peak, winds of at least 130 miles per hour being sustained with higher gusts, but before landfall, it weakened a bit due to an eye wall replacement cycle. As suggested, it is basically when that eye that we see on the satellite imagery dissipates and a new one forms or pops back out so that is in essence what it is and when that happens there's likely to be fluctuations in the intensity of the cyclone but uh, Idalia did not get the chance to complete its owl replacement cycle because it moved inland shortly afterwards and it is not a slow mover she means business she's just doing the damage and moving out but unfortunately with that many places have been damaged or destroyed and some lives have been lost so my condolences to all the affected families uh, as a result of of this cyclone moving through and it is still a flood threat for parts of Georgia and the Carolinas and there's also that risk of tornadoes as well so please stay safe guys and as we head into the early part of next week Bermuda could be impacted by it so once it makes its way back out into the open waters here we're looking at the cone forecast and by the way that blue area that we see going all the way up to the coast of North Carolina is a, a tropical storm warning which is in effect and this should be discontinued as we head into tomorrow so once this is and makes its way back out into waters it will pause in weakening but it isn't likely to re-strengthen into a significant hurricane because of uh, increased unfavorable conditions particularly the wind shear so that increased shear is not going to be resulting in much intensification of the system so it should kind of hold intensity for some time and for now the National Hurricane Center not expecting winds to be stronger than 60 miles per hour nonetheless if this should make landfall in uh, Bermuda then of course that would be pretty significant and those strong winds, the heavy rainfall, the storm surge, all going to be issues as it relates to Idalia afterwards. It's going to be moving out into the open waters of the Atlantic. And so now let's go ahead and zoom into the Caribbean and see what is happening. And there we've got our tropical wave, which is moving through the region, headed toward the central and western Caribbean right now. So most of the activity is to the north of the ABC Islands. Unfortunately, a bit of thunderstorm still over some spots in the Lesser Antilles, nothing crazy. Another tropical wave 
is going to be entering soon, by the way. And uh, we see that there is a plethora of activity developing across parts of Venezuela, especially southern Venezuela, going over into parts of Colombia as well, and even in some spots in Central America, Cuba, and even going to Hispaniola. So much is not happening for most areas uh, this evening. And as I mentioned before, we could see some development very soon. So as you would have seen from the thumbnail, the peak month, which is September, commences on Friday. That is the month when we typically have the most development during the hurricane season. And this map here depicts the typical tracks and origins of our system. So we typically have these tropical waves moving off of Africa. Some of them move into the Caribbean. Some of them move north of the Caribbean. Some of them stay out to sea. But this is when we should be expecting to see a lot more activity across the basin. So more tropical storms, more hurricanes, and likely more major hurricanes as well that will be fueled by the very warm waters out there and so looking at the dry air map we can see that there is that plume of dry air and dust which is moving across the main development region right now that uh, should suppress any development for the very very close future but not for 94L that should be uh, trying to get itself together and eventually become a depression in the next several days not a threat to land though although those thunderstorms are likely bringing some increased activity for the Cabo Verde Islands but as I showed you guys earlier there's another tropical wave that will be moving off the coast of Africa and that's the one we want to watch. Why? Let's take a look at this here. So well, this is the latest updated global tropics hazards outlook map coming from the Climate Prediction Center and we want to focus on the Atlantic. So over this side, this is where our focus is. So week two goes from the 6th of September, which is next week, going to the 12th of the month and uh, week three goes from the 13th to the 19th and here we can see this shaded red region, this striped region uh, that is highlighted here, that is indicating the probability of seeing tropical cyclone formation. Very interesting here, but if we should look in the Caribbean, we see these shades of browns, which indicate the probability of below average rainfall. That is also quite interesting. So based on this shaded area, it seems as though these tropical waves, they want to develop quickly as they move across the land, uh, the main development region, and then eventually make their way to the uh, west-northwest West or northwest potentially missing the basin because if there's going to be below average rainfall that means that we won't have as much uh, tropical waves or strong tropical waves or even tropical cyclones, depressions, storms, hurricanes moving into the Caribbean. However, this is not something that is guaranteed to happen here. So let's now go ahead and take a look at what the ensemble members for both GFS and Euro are expecting. So for Euro here, we can see that uh, this goes out to next Saturday, the 9th of September, and we can see some decent support. So a lot of members expecting that we're going to see development of that next tropical wave that is yet to emerge off the coast of Africa around uh, maybe around the middle part of next week or so, we might see something developing. Some of these members want to take that potential system closer to the Caribbean than others. So uh, there is some confidence with that highlighted area by the Climate Prediction Center for next week. And then as we look at the GFS ensemble members now going out to the same time period next Saturday, we're not seeing as much members, but some are still there nonetheless expecting that we might see some development, maybe a tropical storm developing, potentially a hurricane. So this would not be something to uh, surprising to see because we are heading to that time period when there's going to be a lot of activity going on. So if you're in areas typically affected by tropical cyclones, the Caribbean, the East Coast, the Gulf Coast, as we know, Idalia just made her way through and over into Central America as well. You want to ensure that you have your plans in place. Now is the time to do so because these systems, they can also come on very, very quickly as we saw in the recent week or two with the uh, storms that have developed. And so I'm here to keep you posted though so that you're never caught off guard by any of these and that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this update and I hope you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions as usual please leave them in the comments I'll respond to you once I get the chance to and as always remember to be weatherwise.